Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. It's summer, and many of our families are having tons of parties and get-togethers, and it can be so tempting, especially for me, to indulge in all the wrong foods. But don't worry, Dr. Lauren Powell is here, and she's gonna help us make the right decisions. Right, Dr. Powell? Yes. Yeah, so welcome back to Sister Circle. Thanks for having me and back. Teach us how to eat right, because you know I'm trying to get that wedding weight down. You, you ready, you ready. Yeah, so teach us how to eat right. What's this amazing spread you have before for us. So I have made a grazing board. A grazing board. A grazing board. So you literally just fill it with amazing, nutritious, delicious food and you just graze. And so I've made one and I can't wait to tell you all the things that are on it. I, I promise you. Okay, so you tell me all them. the things that are on it. Okay, so first I'm gonna kind of fix your plate. So these are pickled red onions. Oh! So pickled red onions, I mean, I love them. I think they taste delicious, but they're super good for your gut. Super good for your really? gut health. Like pickled if, onions. Oh my goodness. Like good on a salad, good on tacos, good on anything. But listen, like if you're gonna eat a heavy meal, this is what's gonna help with your digestion so you don't get all bloated and like feeling like you're about to fall out of your chair. But is it gonna make your breath tarnished during these uh, little situations and get together? It's like, <laughs> you're like, oh, oh, she's gotten to the onions. <laughs> listen, listen, let me tell you. You know what's next? It's hmm. cucumbers. Ah, okay. Cucumbers are good for two things, hmm. your bone and your breath. Okay, all it's right. It's good for your bones and it's good for your breath. What? Yes. I didn't know the cucumbers were good for your breath. I knew oh, they were cooling and delicious. They're so good for your crisp. breath. And they're good for your skin. They're super hydrating. You know, you can put them in water and you know, you've got amazing sauces to go with them. They're great. Now, I heard the cucumbers really aid in weight loss too. Yes, they're super hydrating. It helps you pee a lot too, so. <laughs> All of this is going to be good for the waistline. Okay, it's for all you good. in the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so then I have my peppers. So okay. anytime you put a plate or something like this together, you want to have at least three different colors. Because three different colors is going to make sure you have a, a very broad nutrient profile. So each pepper, each color does something different in your does body? Does something different. What? So like green is great for like your iron, it's good for your folate and those B vitamins. But then when you add in, you know, yellow and red and orange, now you've got antioxidants and vitamin Ooh. A and vitamin C and B vitamins. And now we're talking about skin and hair and all of that. So these are, these are great. You gotta have one of every color. See, I've never been a real raw pepper person though. Listen. They're not yummy to me. They're not yummy at all. They're great. So another way, if you don't like them raw, is you can always grill them. Sometimes I'll grill them or roast them. But listen, I have this homemade tahini sauce that I made and everything mm. tastes good in my homemade tahini sauce. Well, but isn't it better for raw though? Because doesn't the cooking, if you over grill them, it takes all the nutrients out of it? Of course, if you overcook. So I always tell people your vegetables should still have a crunch to them, right? It should still taste like a vegetable. It shouldn't taste like soup. So mm. you, you never want to overcook them. I love it raw. I love to feel the crunch. And even when I do grill them, it's just a light grill to get some nice grill marks, but that's it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, now eggs. So nice boiled eggs, these are super easy to prep. And you know, these are very high quality protein. So mm -hmm. that's a great thing to fill up your plate too. Okay, so outside of protein, what else can boiled eggs do for us? I mean, outside of making sure you can uh, make a room leave real quick, fast and hurry if you can't <laughs> digest them well. You know, a little egg thing. They have lots of calcium, lots of potassium. They're, they have an amazing nutrient profile. Okay. And they, they don't have a ton of calories. You're talking about 60 calories in one egg and you get a whole bunch of stuff in it. Okay, I'm gonna ask you a question. Okay. Why do you find eggs in the dairy department and it comes, comes from a chicken? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if they just need to keep it in the in, in the in the cooler area. But we think about it with the dairy. But I heard that room temperature eggs are better for you. Is that true or not true? When you get them from the farm, they're room temperature. See, that's a whole nother debate right there. That's so let's, come on, let's go on to the <laughs> let's go into the salmon. So salmon, you know that's full of your omega-3 fatty acids. And whenever we talk about healthy fats, we think about the heart. We think about heart health, mm -hmm. we think about cardiovascular mm -hmm. health. So Fatty fish is so good for you. I mean, you should try to have two servings a week. It's kind of hard for some people, so some people take fish oil supplements. But this, this salmon is amazing. I seasoned it wonderfully, and it's wild. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be less fatty because it's been able to swim free, and it's going to be the best and the highest quality. You always want to use high quality things for this type of board. Okay, well, let me ask you one more question about fish because some people go f and have fish overboard. Now, can they ha can they contract like mercury poisoning or something like that if they do salmon every day of the week? Yeah, tuna is high in mercury, so you definitely want to be mindful of your portion. Okay. But salmon, you don't have to worry about mercury so much. And so I've also got asparagus. I think about asparagus is good for two things, antioxidants and arousal. What? I use, and I love asparagus, but I try to stay away from it because when I go, you know, tinkle, and I'm like, wait, is that me? No, it's like, it's yeah, not it, good it flushes your kidneys. <laughs> it flushes your kidneys and it flushes um, one of the amino acids. It kind of turns into a sulfur-containing substance and that's what you're smelling. Ooh, 
Well, why is it so important to practice mindful eating at get-togethers? So mindful eating is just taking a moment, being appreciative for the food that we're about to con you know, consume, and taking our time to eat it. Because what happens when you just eat and you're mindlessly eating, you don't realize that you're full until maybe you've eaten the whole board. And maybe you were full mm. halfway through the board. Mm. And if you drink more water, though, it gives that feeling of fullness. Yeah, so I always drink a nice full glass of water before I eat because that way I'm not like ravenous and I'm not going to overeat. Oh, see, this is nice. I have a charcuterie board that I usually make so I can nibble off of things and not go into the pantry and get things that I'm not supposed to eat. Yes. You know what I mean? But yes. Well, you know what? When it comes to eating, though, I do have to say a lot of it has to do with family history. Am I right or am I wrong? Yes, yes. So why do we sometimes think it's such, such, such an ordeal to actually ask our parents or our grandparents about our family history when it comes to our health? It's so important that we know our family's medical history because that's how I know what my patients are going to be at risk for. And sometimes it's uncomfortable. We don't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. We don't want to talk about the heart disease that ran in Uncle Bob and things like that. But listen, when somebody's in the hospital, that's not a good time to talk about our family history. We yeah. need to be talking yeah. about it beforehand so that we don't end up in the hospital. Yes. It's, uh, especially in our family, we have a history of autoimmune issues. And when you don't know that and it goes historically, you know, down the line, down the line, down the line, you're having problems and you don't know why. Yeah. So you, you know? need to know, you need to know what age did that start at and you need to know who in the family has been affected. Okay. So I'm going to try to eat right. I'm, I'm going to try to maybe take a board with me. But it's been so <laughs> great having you here and helping us with these tips. And for more tips on how to live your best life and still eat healthy, check her out at Dr. Lawrence Cooking school dot com.